Golden Fluid Power. Authentic. Driven. Passionate. That's the Delvin difference. Hi, I'm Jordan with Delvin Fluid Power, and today we're going to talk a little bit about pump maintenance. So, when is maintenance required? All types of pumps are going to require a little bit of maintenance through their life. This is going to extend the life of the pump and it's going to help prevent interruptions and downtime. So what are some of the signs that your pump may need to be repaired or replaced? If your pump's acting slower than usual, you may need some replacement parts. If you're having electrical issues or you start blowing fuses. If your pump is overheating. If there's increased noises coming from your pump. If you have any leakage or reduced flow or pressure, it may be time for new pump parts. So we're going to talk briefly about the disassembly of your pump, the parts of your pump, and how to repair your pump. Next, we're going to take the pump apart and we're going to show you what the inside looks like. Once you take your pump apart, you'll notice three main parts. You've got the motor, the lower housing assembly and the upper housing assembly. And we do sell these parts all separately. First, we're gonna talk about the upper housing assembly. If you flip over the upper housing assembly, you will see our valve plate. On the valve plate, you will see five valves. You're gonna to wanna to make sure these are all pressed in nice and secure. If you take out the bolt from the middle and you flip over the valve plate, you will see one rubber o-ring and five floating valves. These will come out very easily. As you can see, they've just fallen out. You're gonna need all 10 of these valves working to have your pump working at optimal performance. The second part of your pump that we're gonna talk about is the lower housing assembly. Now on the lower housing assembly, you're gonna have your diaphragm. Now if you're losing flow or pressure in your pump, look around the edges of your diaphragm. This is the most likely spot that your diaphragm is gonna tear or have a small pinhole. If there is a tear or small pinhole, you may want to think about replacing your diaphragm. If you flip it over, you'll find the bearing of your pump, and this should spin freely. If you do notice any water on the bottom of this lower housing assembly, it probably means there's a leak in your diaphragm and it's time to replace it. The last part of your pump is the motor. We sell a few different sizes of motors, and this is what brings power to your pump. There isn't much maintenance you can do here except for checking the wires and the electrical connectors. So now that you understand all the components of your pump, we're going to put it back together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the upper housing assembly back on the valve plate. Once you have it on the valve plate, you want to make sure to slide it off the table so none of the valves will fall out. So you slide it right off the table like this, put your finger right on the center, flip it over. And once you do that, we're going to put this screw back in the center with the washer. All right, now your upper housing assembly is put back together. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is secure the motor to the lower housing assembly. Your motor shaft should have a little slot on it which lines up with the bearing. So take a look for that slot and put it on top. A little bit of twisting might be needed. So once you have that on there, nice and secure, you'll see there's no gaps around the pump. Next, take the pump head upper housing assembly. You'll see some of the bolts are longer and some of them are shorter. The longer bolts are gonna to connect to the motor and the shorter bolts are gonna to connect to the lower housing assembly. So find a point of reference on the pump, just like this. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to tighten the bolts down in a star pattern. So I would start here and then go across, starting with the short bolts then I would do the same thing with the longer bolts. Once you have all 10 bolts attached to your pump, just take a quick look around the outside and make sure there are no gaps between the motor and the pump head assembly. Periodically, you're gonna to wanna to tighten these. This is gonna reduce the risk of your diaphragm pump leaking. 
I'm using a Torx T20 to tighten the bolts to the motor. The last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is storing your pump and cleaning it. At the end of the season, what you're gonna to wanna to do to clean your pump is flush it with about 60 to 90 seconds of fresh water. And that's hopefully gonna get any chemical residue out of your pump. Then you're gonna to wanna to store it in a heated environment over the winter months. Freezing can cause the diaphragm to tear. Thank you for watching our video. You can find this video along with many other frequently asked questions at delvinfluidpower.com.